Good afternoon everyone. You've got a beautiful fall day here in New England and uh, we're gonna be working on the E63 in this video. So in the last video we put brand new 20 inch wheels on it, split five spoke design, Advanti wheels, beautiful, tinted the windows and blacked out the window trim and also fixed the command uh, entertainment knob in the center console. Uh, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the exterior in this one. I think I mentioned in the last video like to black out this grill here and also the front bumper needs a repaint you know it's got chips everywhere it's been repainted before tons of orange peel and in certain lighting i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see here but there's just not enough color here it does not match the fender at all so needs resprayed this side marker is broken so we're going to start with that the first thing though i will talk about is this grill this car has the adaptive cruise control or as Mercedes calls it, Distronic. And that's what's right here. This, there's a little module behind here. You can see they kind of tried to make it look like the grill is complete, but obviously these, this cover is hiding the module behind it. So, you know, I could block this out, no problem, but I kind of have a fear that when I block all this out, this part here is gonna stick out more just as a giant box, kind of more than it normally does. Um, you know, just a giant black box here. So it, it might not even be a real concern, but what I did was went on eBay and found an OEM Mercedes grill that doesn't have the Distronic box or from a car that did not have Distronic. And get this thing out of the box. So here's what that looks like. So you guys can kind of see the difference there. So here's my theory. I got this cheap enough, I could always resell it, um, easily get my money back or even make some. I wanted to try this. This is just a protective cover. So, you know, assuming you don't let your car get too dirty or have debris flying up here, I assume, or I'm hoping, that the Distronic module behind it will work just fine with the grill like this in place. In which case I can black all this out and uh, you won't have this kind of ugly box up here so. so what I'd like to try is putting this grill in here taking the car for a drive and making sure that all of our distronic functions you know adaptive cruise all that stuff works like it's supposed to uh, before we waste any time painting it because if, if I'm going to end up painting this one anyways then there's no sense in prepping this one if it's going to cause problems with the distronic so so yeah let's swap this grill I'll show you what it looks like here behind the grill and we'll see if we can get this one to work All right, grills off. Here we can see the, um, basically the radar module right here. So this is for our adaptive cruise. And uh, you can see the, as I mentioned, it's just basically a protective cover. So I'm wondering if we can just put this on and you know, as long as we keep this thing clean, if it'll still work properly. I honestly have no idea. I don't know if anyone's ever tried this, but I think I paid like 150 bucks for this grill. It's probably worth more than that. We're gonna give it a shot. We'll see if there's clearance for the fins behind it. It's like someone at one point had a K40. Is this a laser jammer? I wonder where this wiring goes to. Yeah, look into that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, let's see if this thing fits. If we need to do any trimming. And uh, yeah, see if it works properly. All right, that was easy. Grills in, can put some of this plastic trim back later, but you can see the cruise control module back there. You know, it fits perfectly. I mean, I'm just wondering if it's gonna mess the thing up because instead of having kind of a flat, flat-ish, I guess, surface to look at, it's gonna be looking through the, the gills there. But I mean, it's kind of what it's looking through anyway. So I don't know, like I said, let's, I think the next thing to do is drive this thing around and. Who knows, see if it works properly. If it does, I think that's a much cleaner look and it'll look uh, a lot better when it's paint matched.
right, well, so far so good. We're out driving, no warning lights on the dash. Everything seems to be working properly, but that sensor is, as I mentioned, the um, Distronic or adaptive cruise sensor. So the real way to test this is to get it out on the highway and make sure the adaptive cruise works. So yeah, we're about to get up on the highway right now. We'll get behind a car, set the cruise control at whatever, and uh, make sure the adaptive cruise works properly, and we'll go from there. All right, getting up on the highway now. Let's get up to speed here. Find someone to tailgate. <laughs> How about this white Volvo? This guy looks good. All right, so we'll put cruise control on. Distronic Plus, it's maintaining speed. It clearly recognizes the car there. Let's see if I can get back to that screen for you guys. So it recognizes the car right there. It's maintaining speed. Even though I've said that I want to go 80 miles an hour, it's just maintaining the distance to the car in front of me. And then if I get in this other lane here, where there's no one in front of me, it should now speed up to 80. Oh yeah, perfect. So now I think after this guy, I'm gonna get back in the other lane behind this blue Mini Cooper, or actually he's pulling in front of me anyways. He's flying though, let's test it on this Bronco. So we'll get back in the other lane. Should recognize the car in front of me, like this one that's about to cut me off. And yep, we're on the brakes. I'm not, my foot's not on the brake, but the car is braking. So, perfect. All right, I think we're good there. So far, so good. The uh, Distronic Plus feature is working exactly as it should and as it did before I swapped the grill. So, you know, maybe you W212 guys can chime in a little bit, but I think that cover is literally just to keep dirt and stuff off of the sensor. But you guys know me, I keep my cars clean anyways. So assuming the sensor stays clean, uh, I don't think it should be an issue. So we're cruising right along here. Cruise control is set to eight, but we're maintaining about 72 because of this Lexus in front of us. So everything appears to be working. Now we're gonna be on the brakes again. Yep, car's slowing down. Again, I've not touched anything since we got on the highway. Car is, other than steering, obviously, car is basically driving itself. So that's good enough for me. Let's get back to the garage and go from there. Shoo, buddy, that 6.3 is purring over the bridge into Maine. All right, let's get back to the garage. All right, well... Our uh, adaptive cruise or Distronic test went perfectly. Uh, radar seems to work just fine with this uh, non-Distronic grill. So I think we're gonna paint match this one, which is good because these grills are a dime dozen, whereas the Distronic grill that I just took out is extremely expensive and a lot more rare in this chassis. So if I can paint match this, A, I think it'll look cleaner, and B, I think it'll uh, be better to keep our original Distronic grill in OEM condition. That way we can always swap back to a chrome one if we want. Or if we had to, we could paint match the Distronic one. But for now, I am so glad that I picked up a really nice condition OEM Mercedes grill just without the Distronic box. So this thing will be nice and clean to paint match black. We know the fitment is spot on, unlike some eBay ones, and uh, got a great deal on it. So now I need to figure out if I'm gonna separate just this chrome part. I think it probably snaps out from the back or if we just paint the whole grill. We gotta uh, remove this bumper, get it ready for paint. It's gonna need some prep work, obviously some disassembly. So without further ado, let's pull this thing inside, start uh, blowing this front end apart and uh, getting it ready for paint.
next day, beautiful fall day. Uh, I got the bumper outside here all disassembled, so let me show you what we got done. So here it is, bumpers off the car, outside, completely disassembled. Got all the trim pieces and, you know, honeycomb grills and all that stuff out of here. The uh, headlight washers, sensors. The only thing I left in here, I think, are the uh, radar sensors, which I'll flip it over and I'll show you. I don't think these really need to come out. So basically this thing's ready for prep. Interesting to note, this is definitely the original AMG bumper. You can see it's dated uh, September 9th of 2009. You can see all the Mercedes part numbers on most of this stuff. I don't know if there's a part number for the bumper itself. Oh, here it is, right up in the corner. You can see the A212, that means it's for the 212 chassis. So, original AMG bumper, dated for the original for the car. Not that I had any doubts that it was, but just pretty cool to see that. But if I flip it over, pull it into the sun, you can see how bad this thing is. Obviously scuffs on the bottom, that's not a big deal, but what really bothered me was over here. Hopefully you guys can see this, but there's not enough color here. And when this butts up to the fender, it was really obvious that there was not enough color here. Also tons of orange peel. You know, scuffs, scratches, these are all rock chips right here. So, we're going to smooth all this out. There's a scuff right there. Just not really repainted all that well last time. So I'm hoping we fix some of these rock chips, smooth all this out. A little bit more base coat. And then a few thick coats of clear. We'll have this thing looking right. So first step, got to get this thing washed up. Then we're going to uh, sand out some of these defects, probably with 320 and go over the whole bumper with probably 600, scuff it, adhesion promoter, primer, whatever we gotta do, base coat, clear coat. So let's get to work. Got the bumper initial prep done. Uh, got the rough spots where there are most of the rock chips hit with 320. Got some glazy putty drying in the sun right now just to fill in some of those minor rock chips that you know may get buried in the clear coat, but we just want to get as best to finish as we possibly can. So that's clearing. I'm sorry, that's drying before we're gonna hit that with 320 again. Then we'll do the whole bumper with 600. Might have to do a little bit of priming, but we'll get that finished prep in a second. While that's drying, Gonna take the grill apart here. So I think this grill is already painted black or black plastic you know, kind of in between the gills there. So that's good to go. So I think if we snap all these little clips out, this whole front chrome piece will come off. We can then scuff that, adhesion promoter, and paint it. Also think I need to remove this Mercedes emblem here. So we'll figure out how to do that. So while that's drying, let's get to work getting this apart and ready for paint.
two days later, I, I apologize if the filming of the paint process there seemed a little rushed. I was, as it seems like I am every time I paint something, I was slammed for time. Just barely got it done before I had a, uh, a prior commitment. Uh, but we got it done and uh, the paint has been curing the last few days. Even had it outside curing in the sun on Saturday. It's Tuesday now. I painted Friday night, so it's been three, four days. So it should be, should be pretty well dried. Boom, here's what we got. Came out really good. Picked a great day, nice warm fall day, no winds, very little, you know, debris or anything in the paint. Couple, it has been sitting outside and in the garage, so it is a little dusty, so you have to excuse that, but it really came out, you know, I've painted a few bumpers in the driveway. It's probably one of the best ones I've done. Um, I think other than what I'm about to show you, I think there's one little nib right there, some sort of bug or something that landed and then left, but, and then I think, where is it? One little baby drip right there, and then another little baby run right there. Other than that, this thing is pretty much perfect. And the reason I sometimes get runs is because my theory is that I'd rather lay the clear on super thick and have less chance of there being a, a bunch of orange peel. Um, I'd rather just, instead of having to wet sand an entire bumper that's orange peel, I'd rather just have to wet sand a, a couple runs if I get them. So that's my theory. But what the hell do I know? I'm just an idiot that paints in his driveway. So take my two cents for, for what it's worth. Anyways, bumper came out awesome. Those two little runs and that one little nib of dirt that we're probably going to want to wet sand and buff out will be much easier to do on the car, so we're going to leave those for now. Grill came out really good. I think there's one little nib right there that we can wet sand and buff if we wanted to, but honestly, it, it looks awesome. I think I did two coats of base. Really didn't probably didn't even need that much since the bumper was black already, but uh, just covered up any thin spots. We obviously had a few spots of primer base over the whole thing, and then one light coat of clear and two heavy coats of clear. So came out awesome, looks great. Even got the, uh, where'd I put them? Oh yeah, the washer covers and the tow hook cover, those all came out really nice as well. So we've got a whole bunch of assembly to do on this bumper, putting all the grills and stuff back in. The new tinted side markers I got have got to go in. Got to put this emblem back in and put this grill back on the other part of the grill right there. And then we can throw all this back together. Also, I don't wanna have brand new paint here and then have these headlights, which are in, in really nice shape, but they do have a little bit of road rash. You guys know how headlights get. So I think I'm gonna give these a quick wet sand cut and buff as well so that our front end is squeaky clean. Let's talk, let's get to work. Reassembly, cutting, buffing headlights and uh, getting it all back in the front of the car.
not too shabby. So we got the bumper fully reassembled, wet sand and buffed the headlights, both sides also wet sand and buffed the LED daytime running lights here. All the grills are in, all the styrofoam supports, uh, headlight washers, tow hook, everything, everything's plugged in. Still need to tuck up my K40 laser jammer or whatever that thing is wiring. I don't even know where that stuff goes yet, somewhere in the passenger side. We'll figure that out, but bumpers on, secured, looking awesome. Ran into a bit of a snag though. The side markers that I ordered like three months ago are the wrong size. They were too long. These are the old ones, broken. Um, so I already shipped those back and Amazon primed some new ones. Those should be here today, but um, I don't wanna hold up this lift any longer. I gotta get the Camaro on there to do something. So I'm gonna get this off and probably move it over to the other bay. But before we do that, um, I have not really shown you guys the underside of this car yet. And I haven't even really been under there yet because we weren't able to get it on the lift. So while it's right here, before we move it, let's get it up on the lift, take a quick peek underneath. <laughs> All right, here we go. Like I said in my first video, super, super clean car. You know, only 60,000 miles, probably only driven in the summer. Looks basically new under here. Factory cats, front and rear. AMG. And you got your resonator right here. Three inches all the way back to factory mufflers, completely stock. Nothing really to see under here. Everything, all bushings look like they're in good shape. No rust, obviously, anywhere. Completely factory. Exactly what you'd expect to see. Factory felt covers. Nothing crazy. Just wanted to show you guys because we're going to be doing something about this exhaust real soon. So you guys are going to want to stay tuned for that. But just kind of wanted to show you a better look at the underside of this thing while it's up here. But, Jesus, that's bright. Whew. Let's, uh, let's quit rolling around down here and uh, get this thing over to the other bay, get the side markers in, get the grill in, call this front end refresh complete.
Not bad, huh? So here's our completely refreshed front end on our W212 2010 E63 AMG. Got our freshly repainted bumper on there. We fixed all the rock chips. Got enough color on it, especially on this side where you could really tell there was a mismatch. Now the only mismatch is that this paint looks better than the original paint. That's an easy fix when we uh, paint correct the whole car, but I mean, before in this lighting especially, you could easily tell there wasn't enough color here. That's all corrected. All new clear coat, obviously. The front bumper looks amazing. Wet sanded and buffed the headlights and the daytime running lights, so those things look brand new. Got our non-Distronic grill on there. The Distronic module inside still works perfectly. I think it looks much cleaner without the box thing here. Of course, blacked that out, kept the original OEM emblem, chrome-ish, nice little contrast. Man, this thing looks mean. Also got a new set of uh, side markers there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think I went a little crazy with the VHT nightshades. These are on right now, but you cannot even tell that there's supposed to be like a line or something through them, but that's fine with me. I don't even really want any lights there. The important thing is no lights on the dash, no error codes, all blacked out. No more broken side markers. Looks perfect. This thing is just, man, it gets me, man. It really does. Badass executive saloon, not too over the top crazy, clean wheels, clean blacked out front end, black everything. Just looks nice. Still waiting on some center caps. They're coming from like Europe. It's been weeks. I have no idea where they are, but I'd like to get, I, or, I ordered some silver ones for in here, so those should look nice. Other than that, I think exterior wise, this thing is exactly where I want it. Looks a lot like my old D55 did, which is exactly what I was going for. Clean, simple, looks mean, but not too over the top. Woo! That's Sport Plus mode, baby. Those shifts are crispy. Well, it's getting to be that time of year where you get out of work and it's already almost too dark to film. So I apologize if it's a little dark right now, but we're wrapping this video up anyways. I hope you guys really enjoyed the uh, front end refresh on this car. Uh, it looks so much better in my opinion. I'm really happy with how it looks. I'm really happy with the whole car in general, cosmetically now. We had a big transformation in the last video. This kind of really wrapped that up. We still have a lot of maintenance to do this thing. We got mods coming for this thing. I'm already working on that next video, uh, so you guys are not gonna wanna miss that. So stay tuned for more AMG content, more 69 Camaro content, twin turbo Z06. You guys know the drill. With that being said, thank you as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.